Hey guys, welcome to Indie Spotlight. In Indie Spotlight, I get to read and review a book written by a indie or self-pub author. I myself am an indie author and illustrator. I have published graphic novels. Part of those are in reprint right now, which is why you don't see them on my shelf. You just see some of the newer ones that I was able to print. And then these two right here are my newest releases. These are actually YA fantasy dystopian novels. It is a trilogy. The second book is officially coming out on November 12th, but I have copies for pre-orders. So if you would like to check that out, links are in the description below. The book that I'm going to be talking about today is Dead Skin Mask by Thomas Godfrey. Last year, I did have the pleasure of reading another one of his published works, which was All Hail the Carrion King. This was a like sort of horror fantasy and I am pretty much down for anything fantasy and I did enjoy this book. Horror is outside my, jo my genre of choice. Thomas does really well with descriptions, not only of the horror kind, the um, slightly disturbing, but I enjoyed his world building as well. I was very excited when he reached out to me and offered an ARC copy of his newest release, Dead Skin Mask. He did warn me it was probably outside my genre again because it's more horror, maybe a little bit of a thriller, um, metaphysical satire, stuff I don't typically read, but I enjoyed his last book so I very happily accepted this one and now we're going to talk about it because this book should be coming out relatively soon. Disclaimer, this book is not for everyone. Big big not for everybody. As far as content warning goes, this book does have very graphic blood and gore as it is a horror. So if you're not into that genre, this book is definitely not for you. There are some instances of mental illness being displayed. I'm not an expert in that, so I can't say for sure like what and what may be a um, trigger or like what I should warn you guys about, but I am very happy that my own mental state is quite stable. Otherwise, I feel like this book would have given me depression and or a psychotic break. Brace yourselves. Yeah. With all that being said, I actually did enjoy this book. Once you look at the bigger picture and you see all of the sort of stylistic choices that the author did, as well as um, the character evolution that we experience with the main character Mortimer, I think an author or like a fellow writer would definitely appreciate it and anybody who's into satire and horror as well. I, I do think this is quite well written. Um, so we're going to get into that. But as with any review, we're going to start with the synopsis. So jump into it. Dead Skin Mask. Cuckoos are interesting birds, generally of medium size, slender builds and gray coloring. They mostly live their lives in trees and eat insects and other such grub. However, many of them are what we call brood parasites, meaning they lay their eggs in the nests of other birds. Mortimer Aldrichson is one such cuckoo. Born into a human nest that is alien and otherworldly, he has lived among the other birds for the entirety of his life. However, the cuckoo is finally hatching. As Mortimer's life takes a grim turn, it becomes apparent that beneath his socially awkward, shelf-stacking disguise, there is a vicious and evil creature possessed of a divine wrath and great vengeance. The denizens of the kingdoms of men soon become victims to the creature's foul games and pawns in its horrid, ideological war waged to prove that everyone is just as twisted and foul as it is. A brutal philosophy-saturated tale of murder and rage, Dead Skin Mask is a book for mature audiences. Reader discretion is strongly, strongly advised. I think this was a very well-written synopsis. It gives you the feel of the story and kind of hints at what sort of thought and character, like I said, evolution is kind of what the word I want to use with this, but character awakening, character experience that we're going to go with through this story, as well as he does give the warnings in there, so that's great. So we have a good synopsis, and this cover is so nice. Again, horror isn't my genre, but to me, this does feel like 
a horror cover. We've got the dark themes, obviously with the black background and more or less muted colors. The raven and the skull imagery, pretty much, you know, showing death and has a little bit of a poetic, and this is just like a beautiful image as it is. It's a very attractive cover. The text is nice and clear to read. We don't have the author's name on the front, which may be added later. I'm not sure if this is just the early copy or not, but I did notice that. Just swooping in on editing time. I did double check Thomas Godfrey's Goodreads and his website. He has updated the cover. And that's this one here. So this one does have a much similar theme to his book last year, All Hail the Carrion King. Artistically, I like it. I don't know if it gives me the same image as the, the cover that I've been using in the review so far. I can see I can see like the cuckoo and the whole I can like I can picture this being Mortimer and all of this being very appropriate to the story. I don't think it feels as mainstream, but again, I'm not in like horror, the horror genre is not my primary, like, I don't really know what is I to say if it's good or not good for the horror genre. I think it does have a branding feel to it, which is really good with his other book. And it is actually really nice. So we're going to switch to this cover for the rest of the review, since that is the finalized cover. All right, so now is the part of the video where I kind of walk you guys through the beginnings of the story till it gets a bit interesting, just to see if it's something you guys would like to read. And then you guys can check it out for yourselves. And if there's anything like spoilery or other notes I need to add, that will come later. So you don't have to get spoiled and you can check that part out of the video once you've read the book. So throughout this book, the author does maintain a very cyclic routine with his chapters and this is very much showing the sort of mundane life that Mortimer is living where he gets up every morning he works at a grocery store stocking shelf so he goes early in the morning while it's still dark and the darkness sort of before dawn and everything is really his comfort zone even though you know not the best people are like on the streets at this time and he's glad that, like they all stay away from each other and from him He's just in this pattern of going to work when he greets his boss at the door. His boss is always like, so how's school? And Mortimer's like, I don't go to school. Just because I look like I'm that age doesn't mean I go to school and I tell you this every time and you're just not getting it through your thick skull. He doesn't say it in as many words, but we get to experience that through his inner monologue. We're already getting hints that he's, um, I wouldn't say quite frustrated at this point, but he's kind of over the, the superficial comings and goings of society and especially his own life. He goes to stock the shelves and he's like in the candy aisle or the soda aisle where he starts to like spiral on. We're putting poison on the shelves and it's all this, it's almost like a conspiracy, but also just very cynically looking at what society has been doing, not just like in what we put on our shelves, but some days he'll go on to a different theme and that becomes a more prominent theme as the book goes on. But he already has a very kind of negative look on the outside world and just how everybody is like, they don't really care about other people. They follow patterns when like they're saying hi. And there is this one female coworker of his that comes in and every morning, it's so cute. She just goes and it's just like, she seeks him out to say hi to him every morning. And he's so awkward. And he knows this and he, he's like, oh, I should have said something different there. And it's just, just so cute. Their kind of interaction because it's so awkward and she'll come to out of her way to say hi to him. He'll stumble through a brief conversation and like forget to ask how she is. He'll always like make mental notes of what he should say next time. And then, you know, he'll just finish the rest of his work day and he'll go home. His roommate is never there. So he's just alone in his apartment and apparently he's also written a book and he's currently in the querying process waiting to hear back from some agents. So this is where we are jumping in the story with him. He has sent his book out to several agents and everybody has rejected him and he's waiting on two more. Within the first chapter, I believe he gets one more rejection and he's upset about it, understandably, but he's like, okay, well, we still got the one and that's the one I'm waiting for. 
So he just finished his day, showers, cuts his hair, like he hates having hair on his face. But he also has a fascination with skulls. And really early on, he mentions like everybody, the face that we wear, especially in front of society, but also like we can't help but wear it because it's our face is our dead skin mask and our real face is under that is our skull because it's that face is always smiling with you know all the teeth being shown so he has a little bit of an obsession with skulls next day follows the same pattern he gets up he goes to work spiraling thoughts and on one hand i feel like i got tired of listening to all his thoughts but you can't really skip it and I don't know where you would shorten it because you can watch his frustration start to build with each new conversation he has in his head. That tension in him is building and just how upset he is with everything around him. And so that day he's still pretty frustrated so he goes to the bookstore but the bookstore he was gonna go to was like this little small like small town or not small town but local bookstore and it's closed. He hasn't been there in a while and it's closed. And of course his mind <laughs> spirals again into like big box stores taking over and just the economy and things that are generally over my head because ignorance is bliss. And that's why I like reading all these things and I'm like, dude, that's all true. That is exactly what's going on and that is depressing. And now I'm a little depressed and need to take a break. It's heavy. It's good to be in a in a very stable mental state when you're reading this. And if nothing else, it is satire. So don't take it too seriously, even though I feel like the majority of his points are legit and society does suck. But anywho, so he goes out and he's, he's, he's really, really angry. Before he knows it, he's over by, I think he's by the lake or by the pier and a homeless guy approaches him and asks for spare change. And with everything that's built up at this moment, he just snaps and he jumps on that guy. He murders him full on, kill the dude. And it's very, very graphic. This, this particular death was very graphic in the book. The guy probably bleeds out because he pulls off his uh, face with his hands like he scrapes everything off until you can see the skull and everything and that's the only details i'm going to give you there are a few more things that happen he snaps he murders a homeless guy and then he hides the body in the dumpster we have awoken the cuckoo within him this is where mortimer starts to you know he's afraid he's gonna get caught but also there's a part of him that enjoyed the murder over the course of a couple weeks we watch as that cuckoo, um, so like that alternate side of Mortimer, starts to get a bit stronger. It makes him feel more confident. He presents himself at work differently. He kind of thinks about things a little differently. Even when like he does get his final rejection, he doesn't have the same like disheartened reaction. It eventually gets to the point where he isn't caught because who cares about a homeless guy? No one's gonna look into the death of him. He was in the garbage, so probably nobody has even cleaned out the garbage. So he's gotten away with it. And he's wondering if he can do it again. So that's the part I'm gonna leave you guys at. Just if it's up your alley, check out Dead Skin Mask. Like I said, it's coming out relatively soon here. Depending on when you're watching this video, it may already be out. So I will try to put any links that I have in the description below. I enjoyed this. <laughs> like I said, all the heavy facts of life talk really got me down, but watching a character who essentially become a murderer was very, very interesting. And I say this as a person who either is watching Winnie the Pooh or like Forensic Files or a crime documentary, because that's apparently my two sides. And so I do like to see or learn about the psychological developments that like characters go through or criminals or however, whatever we're talking about. So I thought this was very interesting and you could see like, especially with the crimes that are going on in the world today with young people, I don't even think I have to name certain things that come to mind, but like stuff that happens at schools and like grocery stores where people like literally just snap and take it out on society. You can see with Mortimer how that's not even like something hard to believe. It's, it's, it is scary. It is scary that you can 
you can take something so small and it turn into that sort of reaction. I found it very enjoyable and this was nice in that sort of odd way of reading about murder. And the tension gets high when you start to try to figure out who the next person he's gonna kill is because there there were two who I who are relatively close to him that I thought were very much in danger to the point where I, I had like <laughs> emailed the author back and I was like um I hope this person is gonna be okay I'm halfway through your book <laughs> just to just I had to, I had to tell somebody I hope they were okay so check this out very excited and when you get a chance to read it come on back for the last few minutes of this video because I'm just gonna talk on a few points that are maybe spoilery but it goes into um, some other things throughout the rest of the story that I just want to talk about and this is the only place I can talk about it. So check that out please and then come back and finish the video. You should only be seeing this part if you've read the book or if you really don't care about spoilers or like hearing more is gonna convince you to get the book because I highly recommend reading this book. If you are in a uh, good place in your head as well as um, okay with the aforementioned content warnings, then yes, read this book. If, if it's not for you, I don't know why you're still here, but I appreciate the view. Thanks. I'm just going to go over a few of the points that happen in the latter part of the book. I don't want to go into too much detail because this book is coming out soon from when I am recording and posting this review, so I don't want to give it away because, like I said, read it. It's, it's, it's an experience. So yeah, who is he gonna kill next? Because he's already got it in his head that the pattern of the world is either in threes or fours. So we killed one, which means he's gonna probably try to kill two more, if not three more. When he gets around to planning his second murder, um, he's still having interactions with the girl at his work, whose name is Amber. And Gradually their interactions get better because Mortimer is feeling more confident. He cuts his hair and he's actually like tries to converse with her, like ask her how she's doing. And when she seems upset, like he shows concern. So they start like making connections and getting a little closer and closer. He's literally just talking to her and he thinks I can picture her dead or like I can, I can picture her with her, without her dead skin mask. And I'm just like, oh no, don't hurt Amber. Oh no. Cause their re interactions were so cute. And I was like, this is not a romance by far, but even just as friends, I'm like, no, don't do it. So the whole second half, if not more of the book, I'm just worried about Amber. So he continues his sort of inner plotting and he does struggle. It's not just he like flips a switch and now he's a murderer. He does struggle with the moral decision of it and like who is he to judge. He eventually convinces himself around to the point of like making a statement for society because society is already warped and far gone and he's gonna be the savior kind of thing. So it takes one of those turns. Uh, it's not too heavy on the religious aspect. Like it's not a direct, you know, I'm the, I'll be the martyr or I'll be the holy savior. Um, there are some mentions of religion, but it's really not the core of this at all. So don't worry about that. For, he, since he got away with the first one, he tries to figure out if he can do it again and get away with it. But also like, can he still have it get attention? Cause the first homeless guy didn't even make the news. There was nothing. So nobody recognized it. Therefore it's like, did it even really happen? The second guy he approaches, he decides to murder in a way that looks like a suicide just to see if he can, if it will get anybody's attention because he's another homeless guy, it's whatever. He still wants to get away with it. You know, he's still trying to hide his crime. And that one does make the news. He even tries to like talk to Amber about it. And he's like, so did you hear about the guy who drowned on the news? And she's like, not really like, I guess I don't really care because he's homeless. And that was kind of what he was looking for. He was looking for people to admit that they don't care, that they like, they know they're doing wrong, stuff like that. And that sort of affirms his idea to um, kill Amber. So I'm just like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. So many things to think about. 
it is an experience. It is such an experience. So if you're into horror, you will enjoy this. If you're into getting into the mind of developing murderers, you'll be into this. If you are mentally unstable, I don't think you should read this because it it's just heavy. That's really what it comes down to for me. It's very well written for what it is. I enjoyed it. I'm able to look at it um, and see sort of the artistic ways that the author arranged the story. However, I acknowledge this book is not for everybody. Big warnings here. Just I hope you I hope you're a, a overall optimistic person and don't fall into a pit of despair from reading this. So if you enjoyed anything in this review, feel free to like, comment, and um, check out Thomas Godfrey's books. Um, All Hail the Carrion King is already out if you're more into fantasy and that's more like a dark fantasy horror. You can check out my review for that as well. And if you're into more of horror satire, check out Dead Skin Mask coming soon. And then subscribe if you're interested in learning about other indie books. I have a few more reviews coming out this year, so stay tuned. And if you have a recommendation of an indie or self-pub book that you would like me to read and review, leave it in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.